2013, a researcher working in the vast collections of the National Museums of Kenya made a surprising discovery. Tucked away in a cabinet marked hyenas, he noticed a large fossilized lower jawbone from some kind of carnivore. And it was big, much bigger than the jawbone of a lion, the largest carnivore in Africa today. Six years later, it was revealed to the public as an enormous beast that was completely new to science. It was named Simba Kuba Kutoko Africa. And while its name literally means big lion from Africa in Swahili, this creature was not a big cat. And even though it was found in a drawer labeled hyenas, it was not a hyena either. It was a hyenodont, an extinct family of carnivorous mammals that lived from the Paleocene to the Miocene Epoch, and it lived in Africa, Europe, Asia, and North America. But Simba Kuba was not only unique because of its large size. The fossil jawbone was excavated in the late 1970s at a site called Meswa Bridge in western Kenya that dates back to about 26 million to 23 million years ago. Okay, so so far we know that a few years back, someone was looking through an archive in Kenya and they get this jawbone which relates to something that was found decades ago. It's one jawbone and it does probably suggest a very large carnivore. But I mean, what do we really know from this? It's not very much. Not very much at all. And then they just say, this is from 60 million years ago. <laughs> This is, this is the Cenozoic era, you see? That's just tossed in there. Like, that's, that's not questioned at all. Science is, you know, scientists are, are, they're still gonna think the same thing 50 years from now. They'll be like, yeah, yeah, it's, and just keep in mind how they're constructing this picture as they lead you along in the story. It was from this jawbone that researchers were able to estimate a range of potential body sizes for Simba Kubwa, based on the size of its molars and comparisons to living carnivores. The thing that all this is resting on is that the size of its molars and comparisons to living carnivores. That's great. I mean, there's dental forensics. Those people can tell a lot about people by looking at their teeth. And um, I mean, sure, you can infer a lot from teeth, but is this really sufficient? I mean, come on. Just because it, it's like a few teeth and you're inferring all these things about this creature. I'm not saying, no, this creature didn't exist There and evolution is wrong because this creature didn't exist. That's not what I'm saying. I mean, this creature very well could have existed. I mean, I don't I doubt that it existed as long ago as they say it did. I don't I don't know how old the earth is, but I I'm quite skeptical of saying that the earth is all these multiple millions of years old because that's just done because it it fits the theory that you need all these millions of years to have all these random mutations which somehow produces new species. You know, that's beside the point. I'm just sort of looking at this video to see the typical reasoning process, like the typical, how do these people think? How do they, how do they lay it out for you? And it looks like at its smallest, Simba Kubwa was probably the size of a large lion. And at its largest, it could have been larger than a polar bear. And it was a hypercarnivore, meaning that it- So it was larger than a polar bear, it was a hypercarnivore. I mean, sure, the jawbone is gonna s tell you how big the skull is, and then that's gonna give you a reasonable idea of how big the body is, but you don't really know. I mean, maybe, maybe it was like a big, big jaw, but then the body wasn't that big because you have no other bones of this creature. It got more than 70% of its calories from meat. Based on its age and its monstrous size, Simba Kuba is the oldest known giant member of its subfamily of hyenodonts. These hyenodonts gave the world some of its largest terrestrial carnivorous mammals ever known. And while these behemoths were the apex predators of their time, they're not around anymore. It turns out that becoming the biggest, baddest beast on the landscape can have serious consequences when that landscape suddenly changes. Hyenodonts are members of an extinct order of carnivorous mammals called the creodonts. And even though they were super carnivorous, creodonts evolved independently from the order Carnivora, which includes all modern felids, canids, and other critters. Creodonts are older and more- They evolved, I mean, that's another assumption they're making, that they these things slowly changed from one another, and, and maybe, maybe some of them did, because if they're 
if it's the same species, you can get different variations of that species. But, but I don't know. I mean, there are barriers between species. It's like this porous nature of this porous state of affairs for the animal kingdom, as seen by evolutionists. That one species can just melt into another one. It can enlarge, form new bone structures, new organs that it never had before, and do this over a series of relatively slow and small mutations over time, and somehow still find breeding partners? Where are the skeletons? Like, show me this. So many people say there are transitional species, but we've lost all the fossils, or... They're showing all these artist uh, renditions here, but they don't have any skeletons lining up. So you can see one thing becoming another thing. Usually they don't even have complete skeletons for a lot of these things. Primitive than carnivora, and they look different too. Their skulls were low with small brain cases, and their limbs were generally short and heavy. Early on in their evolutionary history, about 65 million years ago, the creodonts branched into two lineages, one of which was the hyenodonts. But the exact place they arose is still kind of a mystery. Some experts think they originated in Africa, others say Asia, and some suggest both, with a distinct group of hyenodonts evolving on each of the two continents. It's just scientists trying to figure it out on their own. They confer with other scientists, but there's not any ultimate authority. It's just kind of like, well, we, we think this based on our evidence, but what do you guys think? Well, what have you found over there? Oh, well, we think this, so it might be a little different. And there's like, there's no fundamental principles or anything underne underneath that they can use as an ultimate authority. It supposes that the, the truth is somehow out there and we can, we can somehow get to the truth and, and understand it by using reason on our own? I mean, come on, do you really think that's possible? That's pure pride to think that you could, you could do that. No, it's the other way around. We've sort of been laid down here by truth. We can't ever really understand that completely, that we need a lot of guidance and we need spiritual principles. And then you can have your science. You can have all of this. This is good stuff. You can, but uh, they don't have it. So that's why they're, they're they keep, you know, one theory is replaced by another theory. And that's why like 50% of science ends up being wrong or, or, or partially wrong or it can't be reproduced or it's, you know, or it was flat out, you know, never reproduced. And it, so it, that, that's just, and that's increasing in our time. We still don't know what causes gravity. So there's always going to be these open gaps where we don't know. You can't get the truth through reason, through uh, empiricism. Those are just more lower, lower functions. Those have their place, but those are much more lower. Otherwise, you just come up with this shifting sand of truth where there is truth and there isn't truth because it's constantly changing and like evolutionary theory is constantly readapting and it just looks more and more ridiculous as the years go by. But the fossils and the phylogenetic evidence we have seem to suggest that they arose somewhere in Eurasia. And Simba Kuba was part of a subfamily called Hyena Lurinae. This particular group probably originated in the region known as Afro Arabia, which includes the whole Arabian Peninsula and Northern Africa around 48 million years ago. 48 million years ago, based on what? I mean, again, I know there's reasons what they would base it on, but do they tell you here? No, they do not tell you. From there, they spread into Europe, Asia, and North America, where their large size and powerful bite ensured their position at the top of the food chain. But by the middle Oligocene, roughly 30 million years ago... I mean, I'm not saying they're doing this on purpose. They're just trying to show you a time scale. It kind of shows you evolutionary theory has a hollowness to it, just like this hollow rectangle where it's just like the meaningless millions of years, the meaningless compendium of eons. It looks like they went extinct on the northern continents, maybe due to competition from other groups of carnivores that evolved during that time. But in Afro-Arabia, they persisted, evolving in isolation, separated from the newly evolved carnivores in Eurasia by a seaway. And this isolation could have contributed to the rise of giant hyenodonts like Simba Kubwa, because it wasn't until the early Miocene around 23 million years ago that evidence of the largest members of this group appeared, approaching the size of modern-day rhinoceros. 
What we know about Simba Koopa and its close relatives comes from a very fragmentary fossil record, which is mostly made up of dental remains and a few bones from the rest of the skeleton. This limited fossil record has made it hard to figure out what their family tree or even they themselves looked like. So now they admit they have no idea what they really looked like, but we're going to give you all these artist depictions. So the evolutionists are very creative in that religious sense. They're going to create a world for you to imagine. Now, of course, PBS did not directly set out to prove evolution in this video. But having said that, do we see here anything that would cause us to believe that fish are crawling out of the sea, becoming mammals, and then mammals are turning into more higher order mammals are we seeing anything fantastic like that we're seeing something that just looks like a half bear or or half lion looking carnivore it, it looks significantly different but not so out of the boundary that if we saw something like this today we just think oh my goodness there's there's some giant grizzly or there's you know some giant lion i mean it's like okay it's still well within the bounds of canid or felid hasta luego amigos